Hello there, BookTube. I have a new tag video for you. I was uh, thinking about my last video, and I realised that whilst I don't disagree with anything I said in that video, it was me being angry me again. And um, I've, I've mentioned this in the past when I've had ranty videos or I've, uh, I've, I've jumped on something quick. And uh, yeah, I don't, I, I'm not walking anything back. I'm not saying I don't believe what I said, but I do think that I I have a tendency to be needlessly combative. So I wanted to readdress the balance, and I decided that the best way I could do that is with um, is with a positive video rather than one that's fighting. So uh, I was sitting here and I just had an idea pop into my head, and I have created a new booktube tag. This is the spread the love booktube tag, and this is needlessly saccharinely positive. The entire point of this tag is to promote the community and make people feel worthwhile. And I think that's a good thing. It's a hell of a lot better than uh, than calling them you know, delusional and uh, say, saying they're stupid and uh, starting a fight with them, which is far more my speed. But I'm going to try, I'm going to try and, you know, use my tag neuron. I'm going to try and turn down Ch turn down the dick gene, because you know, I, I I can't I can't go through the night unless I've been a dick to somebody. I just can't get to sleep. But you know, I, maybe if I can turn that down a little bit, you know, suppress it. So this is the spread the love booktube tag, and hopefully people will en will enjoy this. So it has uh, seven questions, and it was created by me. So. I don't need to link to the original creator because, well, well, I'm going to do it anyway. I'm going to link to the original creator. You'll find a link to my channel that you're already on in the description below. Uh, that, that's the dick gene telling me to uh, to do that. So um, maybe I've got it out of my system now and I can spread the love. So of the seven questions, uh, we're going to start with question one because that's usually a good place to start. And question one is, what new booktubers who have started their channel within the last month or so would you like to welcome to BookTube? Well, the first one I'm going to welcome is The Den of Elucidation, uh, which is the channel created by Hass, who is in our Gilded room, and he has a single video up and less than 10 subscribers, so go and subscribe to him and make him feel welcome, because uh, he's brand new, brand spanking new. He has a single video up, which is his BookTube newbie tag, and he has a new take on BookTube. He is going to be... Uh, mixing booktube with art because he's a digital artist and he likes to do uh, comic style and um, you know, similar artwork. I, I don't know art, so I'm not going to be able to comment too much. But he likes to do you know sketching and comic based um, drawing, uh, and he does digital artwork. Uh, and each video he puts up, he's going to be using it as an excuse to display some of the art as he's drawing it. So you'll get a real time video of him drawing the art. Um, rather than looking at his face, and you'll, he'll do his video as voiceover over the top. It's a really, really uh, cool way of merging the uh, the concept of BookTube and uh, giving him time and exposure for his art. Fantastic combination. I've seen channels combine drawing with like commentary or drawing with news, but never drawing with BookTube. So it's completely new. So great on him for that. Uh, another channel is one I've only recently discovered. Uh, well, obviously, because it's only been around for a couple of weeks. And that's Lee's Library. Uh, she is a, a relatively new booktuber, obviously. And uh, she reads a good eclectic uh, selection of books. She's got a lot of classics. She's got um, she's got a, a fair collection of um, like classical era history. Uh, but she also reads contemporary novels, the occasional fantasy, things like that. Uh, she's got a, a great selection and brand new. She uh, She's clearly studying literature. That's obvious from the offset. But I think that she'll add a lot of vibrancy because, again, she's not just someone reading in one genre, which we get a lot of on BookTube. It's no, not, bad, uh, not a bad thing. But we get a lot of people only reading fantasy or only reading classics or only reading YA. She reads quite a wide variety, so I think she'll be a great addition. Uh, to BookTube, and let's welcome welcome her to the community. Uh, next, I'm going to add J. Scott Phillips, who um, has been on you 
uh, YouTube for ooh, all of about a week and a half, I think, at this point. Uh, not long at all. He's only put up a, a couple of videos. Um, and again, I recently watched his BookTube newbie tag, and I want to welcome him to the uh, to the community. He's very new. He's only got a few subscribers. So let's get him a few more and get him out there. He te seems to be a, uh, a more classic style reader. Uh, but at the same point, uh, he's going to bring something new as well. And that's going to be some experience because he's an older, uh, he's an older man. So he's going to have been reading for a long time. He's been reading since the 1960s. So he's been reading longer than I've been alive. So he's going to have a lot to offer the community because he's got all that experience to offer. He's got all of those different books that he's read that he can he can talk about and he can uh, join in with the conversations on them. So fantastic new addition to BookTube. So welcome to all three of those channels. They will all be linked below. This is the kind of tag you're getting into. So let's carry on. Question two. Now this one is interesting. Because there's no limit on time frame. These could be people who've been doing BookTube for 10 years or someone who's been doing it for a week. So this could be an excuse to shout out even more brand new BookTubers if you really want to. But I'm not going to do that quite so much. Uh, question two. What BookTubers do you feel are criminally underappreciated on BookTube and that you would like to highlight? I'm going to go with Jordan Parsons, who is someone I only recently discovered. He has... He has some great videos up already. Uh, really, really get along with his videos. Like I haven't heard much of an opinion from him that I don't agree with, and he has a fantastic taste in books. Uh, I, I haven't seen all of his videos, obviously. I'm sure I disagree with him on something, but so far, his channel is fantastic. I want to watch a lot more from him. So, yeah, let's get him some more subscribers. Let's get him out there so that people you know get a, a feel for what he's like. Um... Next, I want to talk about Nico's book reviews. Nico is a channel that, uh, well, Nico's a, a person who's, uh, who started BookTube around the same time as me, actually. He's been doing it for about two years now. Um, and his channel has done pretty much what my channel's done. It managed to reach around the 1,000 subs mark. I think he's at 1,000 subs. And then his videos have just kind of stayed with him getting around the 50 to 100 views per video some of his videos will then gather to you know, about the 200 views 300 views mark um and that that seems to be a barrier that some booktubers just hit we hit that barrier and then because the uh, the way the youtube algorithm works and the way um there's there's just so much out there it's really hard to get your name out there if you actually type in nico's book reviews into the search engine what you get is mike's book reviews and a shitload of his videos because two of the three words are the same it just thinks nico is you misspelling mike um so it doesn't recommend his channel enough and that's just not fair so let's get nico a little bit more notice let's get him out uh, let's get his uh, videos out there and let's see if he can uh, he can break through that barrier because he deserves it he makes some really good videos he talks about about books with passion. Uh, he's a little less animated than some people, but that's probably a good thing, because honestly, a lot of people are over-animated on BookTube. Uh, they're, they're waving their arms around. And going, Hi, guys! It's, it's very fake. Nico doesn't really do that. Nico's quite straightforward, and he's, he's honest. He's honest to the camera, and we can't argue with that. So, yeah. The last one for this question I want to bring up is Squirrel's Bookcase. Uh, oh, Squirrel's Bookshelf, sorry. Squirrel's Bookshelf is a channel I discovered last week. And she is adorable in every way. She is fantastically interesting. And somehow, I don't know how, she has the perfect book library. It's not even a book library filled with my favourite books, but it's just perfect. You really need to see what her, what her bookshelves are like. Uh, everything about it just jumps out at me, uh, at me as this is... The perfect person that you, you want to sit in a chair and just talk to all day long. I'd love to just deep dive into this girl's brain. Because she seems to she seems to have every like and dislike that I have. She loves the same kind of things. And even the things that she, do, that she likes that I have no interest in. Like, for example, she's a big fan of Disney as a company. She used to work for Disney. And she's got a lot of love for Disney as a company. I don't much care for Disney. But... The way she talks about it makes it interesting for me. 
I want to hear more because it's a subject I don't know about and it's one she's clearly passionate for, which means that I, I, I find joy just listening to her talk about it and thews about it. It's fantastic. So she is a she is exactly the kind of channel that I want in BookTube. People who can enthuse and push that passion out and where even when you don't share it, you still share in the joy of it. So yeah. Uh next next question. Question three. What bookish channels that no longer make videos do you want to let know you miss them and you would like to gently encourage them to come back to BookTube? Because one of the things I've noticed is we've been losing channels. A lot of booktubers kind of started during COVID, um, around around tw- uh, mid-2020. Uh, they made videos for a year or so, and then they stopped. Uh, the last six months, we've lost a lot of channels. Some of them have not posted for a year. Uh, I've picked out three that I want to highlight. But there's plenty out there. There's more than these three by a long way. Uh, the ones I want to highlight is... Luke Edwards, which was a channel that exploded really quickly. Really funny guy, really great takes. Got a, a good eye for comedy timing, and he's got great. Uh, he's got uh, you know, a great camera presence. He can he can really push himself forwards, and I'm sure he's got plenty to say about books. Admittedly, he reads a little on the slow side because he's got other stuff on. Uh, I get the impression that he feels like he's not got enough to say. That he, he doesn't read enough books fast enough to really give um, BookTube the content that it wants. And I, I can appreciate that. I don't read fast enough either. Often I can go an entire month and I still haven't finished a book. Especially when I'm reading shit like this. Bloody great big tome like that. No wonder I'm never finishing anything. <laughs> but whilst I do feel that that's probably one of the things stopping him... Um, what he was doing was still fantastic, and I want to see him come back. He still occasionally posts a short, but the amount of content on his channel has trickled to almost nothing. So, uh, yeah, I'd, I'd like to see Luke Edwards back. Luke Edwards was great. Um, the, another one I'd like to see back is Owen J. Wall. Owen J. Wall was um, a, a fairly small uh, booktuber, only had a couple of hundred subs, only got maybe, what, 50 to 100 views per video at most. Uh, so... I can see why he may have decided, you know what, this just isn't working, I'm not getting any traction, I may have just stopped for that reason. But the thing about Owen J. Wall that concerns me is he vanished. Uh, He was in my Discord, back when we were on Discord, before we moved to Gilded. And um, I saw him on social media, I saw him on uh, on YouTube, and he was an interesting guy. He was a a good, traditional, everyday booktuber. And uh, then he just disappeared. Just gone. And that's worrying. Like, for all I know, I, I I don't mean to be um I don't mean to be macabre about this, uh, but uh, he could have died, for all we know. And there's no way for us to know. He just vanished. Like that could genuinely have happened. And if that's the case, then you know what? We still miss you, man. But you know, the this that's the thing about things like uh, like BookTube. People can disappear tomorrow, and we might never know what happened to them. So it's always good to, if someone's not been online for a couple of weeks, and they usually post two or three videos a week, or if they've gone a month without posting, and they post maybe once every two weeks, send them a message and go, Hey, is everything okay? How are you doing? Are you still uh, posting, or have you moved on to something else? Because you never know. That person might be going through some stuff, and that message might just be the thing that makes them think, Yeah. I'm coming back, so maybe maybe we're you know we're too late, and maybe Owen isn't with us anymore. But hopefully he is, and if he is, I'd love to see some more uh, some more videos from him. I'd love to see him back in the community. Uh, same goes to the third person, who is even more surprising that he vanished, because this guy has thousands upon thousands of subscribers and had a really popular channel, and he's not posted for six months. And that's Cameron Chaney, who had a horror-themed channel, clearly a big fan of books, massive internal library in his home, like like uh, a whole room dedicated to it, wall-to-ceiling books on all walls. Like, huge, huge fan of books. Um, 
loads to say on, on horror and um, you know it goes into other subjects like, like fantasy and sci-fi and the occasional uh, other book outside of horror but usually he's talking about horror books but it was a unique channel because he he delved into that horror topic and he made it his focus and because of that he was highlighting books that you didn't see in any other booktube channel and it's such a shame that his channel wasn't uh, wasn't producing anything uh, recently because it was genuinely high quality as well it was high production value it could it could have become a tv show that's how good Cameron Cheney's channel was like if you watch he had genuine production value so um I'd like to see him back question four what booktube video have you most enjoyed recently please post a link to this video in your description now I'm actually going to mention a couple of videos um all linked together and they're from a channel I've already mentioned and that is the building my dream library videos by squirrels bookshelf now, she built this whole library from scratch. She literally got bookshelves. Um, she stained the wood herself. She painted the walls of the room. She did a whole design project. She stained the floor. She did everything herself. She picked out all the furniture that she thrifted from various different places, designed the room from scratch. And it is one of the most gorgeous libraries I've seen. The last video she does... She does a Q&A followed by a library tour where she goes over her library afterwards. So if you watch all four videos, you basically get to see her start from a complete blank room and end with a library complete with Q&A and library tour, which means that you get a fantastic idea of what this of what this woman's tastes are, what her personality is like, um, what her mentality is like, the kind of books she enjoys. Uh, the kind of genres that really get her going, what her hobbies and interests are. You really get to know her after watching these four videos. And I, I'll I'll admit, I'll admit when when you've when you've watched that many videos in a row, I've I've got a slight crush on this woman. She is she is a beautiful person, and her husband's a very lucky man. <laughs> so, yeah, watch watch those videos. They're f they're incredible videos. They're really well made. Uh, so next question. Question five. What non-booktube channels do you watch that you would like to recommend and maybe prod into giving us an opinion on books? Now, I have six that I'm going to mention here, uh, rather than the uh, with the others where I've only mentioned three. Um, and that's because I watch a very, very big variety of things across uh, YouTube. Uh, some of the things I watch on YouTube are bizarre as well. You wouldn't believe how many little communities of completely insular channels there are that seem to be connected to each other and no one else. <clears throat> and somehow, I end up in the middle of all of them. I don't know how this works. So the first one I'm going to mention is Karen Puzzles. This is a channel devoted to building jigsaws. I don't give a damn about jigsaws. I really don't care. I don't give a scut of a fuck about them. <laughs> I I don't build jigsaws. I'm I'm bad at jigsaws. I don't care about jigsaws. Somehow I have watched probably close to a dozen or more videos by this woman. All she does is talk about jigsaws and puzzles. I don't care about the subject. I couldn't care less. And yet I find myself captivated by these videos. It, they're genuinely entertaining. So um yeah. Karen Puzzles. Check it check it out. You'll find yourself watching two or three videos and then before you know what's going on, you subscribe to a Jigsaw channel and you don't care about Jigsaws. It happened to me. Stranger things have happened. Next. Anime figures. I don't care about anime figures. I don't watch anime. I don't know who any of these characters are. I don't know what these models are about. And yet there is a small community of anime figure collectors that collect figures importing them from Japan. There's a whole market, a second-hand market around these figures. There's different styles, different scales. Um, the, the, the community seems to be heavily focused on um, a female-centric audience, but either 
either these women have a strange fascination with the female form and find it uniquely aesthetically beautiful in a way that most women don't, or this community attracts almost exclusively lesbians. Because almost all of the women in this community collect sexy anime figures, including some that are purposely lewd. And they don't bother to hide it, they giggle along about it, they, they'll talk about how cute and how adorable and how beautiful these models are. They have never once, in all the videos I've seen, I've watched a lot of videos by about four or five of these women, none of them ever mention that they're gay. So I don't know if they actually are gay. They might be, and good for them if they are. Good for them as well if they are and they don't feel the need to dis to make their channel about being gay as well. That's a fantastic thing if that's the case. Uh, but yeah, it is really weird watching it because it's completely unspoken throughout the entire community. They just share these these sexy models. Some of the some of these models like full scale models of anime characters in Playboy bunny outfits and sexy poses, and they will pay hundreds of dollars for these models. And they all love them. They're all really excited for them. And again, it's one of those things. They have a passion, and because they're so enthusiastic about it, I share in their enthusiasm. So, yeah. Anime figures. Again, I have no connection to this. But for some reason, I keep watching. So, yeah. Check out that channel. Next, I've got a channel that I do actually share the interests of, and that's Shadowversity. Now, Shadowversity I'm going to mention because Shadowversity is the channel that introduced me to BookTube. Um, Shadowversity is a channel that uh, I started I started out watching. I ended up uh, following from uh, his videos onto Daniel Green's channel because, Dan because Shad wrote a book and Daniel Green reviewed the book. And then from there, Daniel Green introduced me to Murphy and Appear, and that introduced me to BookTube as a whole. So, if it wasn't for Shadowversity, I'd have never found BookTube. But Shadowversity is an interesting channel, um, because it's it's about so many different things. Uh, it's about medieval combat, it's about castles, it's about historical information. But it's also about um, TV shows, and it's about video games. And it's all all kind of siphoned through the same geek mentality, which is cool. Um, I would give Shadowversity a watch. It's one of those everything channels that kind of has a theme, but the theme is hard to place because he could he could come out with a, a video tomorrow about how to fight uh, cyclopses and a video uh, about how uh, about historical footwear, and both of those would fit his channel. Like, it's really, really hard to describe what goes into this channel. So, Shadowversity is one I've got to recommend. Um, in the same vein, the next one I'm going to I'm going to recommend, and and this is another one where the videos are much less regular now, and I kind of want to push him to start making more videos because he's he slowed down, and that's not a good sign. We need more from you, and that is Lindy Beige. Lindy Beige is a channel that, again, much like Shad, he talks about everything from uh, from medieval weapons and armour to Dungeons and Dragons uh, to describing Lindy Hop dancing to just things and thoughts that occurred to him. Some of his best videos are an hour or more. Like he did an entire video, I think it was almost two hours long, on the medieval history of the bed. He did another video that was about an hour and a half long on... Uh, on uh, old British currency and it's fascinating it's like full-blown documentaries and it's still got his dry wit attached which makes it so much fun um, next video uh, next uh, channel I'm going to uh, recommend is to the ranting Griffin now to the ranting Griffin is someone I've been following since about 2003 maybe even earlier than that I'm not sure uh, I, I listened to his old uh, his old rants on his uh, on his website, I then listened to his, his podcast, Two Cents, and then he moved on to YouTube, and I followed again. I've uh, I've spoken to two a few times. I wouldn't uh, go so far as to say that we're friends. Um, I don't want to you know, pretend to have too much of a, 
of a connection to someone. But we've spoken a few times, we've shared a few emails back and forward, and two's a fantastic guy, he's a really interesting guy. And like I say, I've been following him now for what almost twenty years. After you've been following someone on social media and you know communicating back and forth every now and then for twenty years, you get a sense that you know them fairly well. And um yeah, the Rant and Griffin makes such great content. Um, his rants are really funny. Uh, his uh, his new two bits uh, Monday videos are a nice little distraction. They're just meme videos. Uh, and if you go back and uh, look for his uh, his old two cents episodes, they're a bit aged now because it was a current affairs podcast. But you could binge your way through that podcast and thoroughly enjoy it. But he still makes content now. He still makes videos. Right up until this day, he makes a lot of, uh, a lot of video game based videos, uh, let's play style stuff, as well as his comedy. He does stand- a full stand up comedy uh, acts as well. Um, I will link some of his stand up comedy in the uh, description below because a lot of his stand up comedy isn't on his channel and there's some really funny bits. But I, I definitely want to highlight them. The last channel I'm going to mention in- for this question is Hannah Barron. Now, I'm under no delusions that Hannah Barron is actually going to respond to this. Um, she's She's got, what, half a million subscribers, something like that? And she is about as far removed from BookTube as you can physically be, because her channel is a hunting and conservationist channel. Now, this, this is the epitome of a passion I do not share in any way, shape, or form. And yet, because she shows that passion... I find myself interested to hear what she has to say. She is, uh, you know, a traditional Deep South American uh, conservationist. She ha- uh, she makes videos about guns, about hunting, about how to properly skin, prepare, and uh, store meat. Uh, so she she will go out to hunt and prepare her own food. So she know she makes videos. She has posts across her social media where she will. Uh, explain uh, the hunting, uh, the um, the slaughtering, the cleaning, and the preparation of various different foods. And she'll go through everything from the weapons to the camo gear to the butchering tools, everything that's involved. Um, which is one of those things where uh, it's it's a hard thing to watch if you're not used to that kind of thing. Um, it's not something that is for the faint of heart. But um, if you're prepared to eat meat, you shouldn't be too squeamish about where it comes from. Uh, and I do eat meat, so I shouldn't be so squeamish about the idea of actually watching that kind of thing happen. If um, if I'm prepared to accept the the fruits of that uh, of that industry, then I can't turn my back on that industry. Uh, she gets a lot of um, a lot of backlash from it, especially from like the the vegetarian and vegan uh, sides of uh, social media. Which I mean, you're not doing yourselves any favors by attacking this girl. She's not going to listen to you. It's a completely different. You know, completely different perspective. She is not going to change her mind because you go and say, you know, you shouldn't eat meat. You're, you know, you're you're evil for killing these animals. She's not going to care what you've got to say. But even still, um, I say, might won't be for everyone. Most things aren't. Um, for me, as a Brit watching, we don't really have hunting in Britain. Uh, the closest you'll get is maybe like a bit of clay pigeon shooting. Uh, guns are not common in Britain. They're not actually banned. People think guns are banned in Britain. They're not. Uh, but more than half a million people in Britain have uh, licences to carry firearms. Um, but half a million people uh, in a country with 68 million people is less than 1%. Um, so they're, they're not common. Uh, there's one gun for every 119 people in Britain. Uh, so yeah, not not a, a regular thing. Um, hunting, uh, gun like gun culture, not big here, uh, so we don't have like the self sufficiency conservationist movement here, and it's fascinating. I also I've watched a few of the prepper channels, but I've I've actually kind of lost uh, my appreciation for them recently. I watched a few prepping channels, uh, like the Canadian Prepper, for example, which I will link below. Actually, now that I've mentioned them, um, I wasn't planning to, but what the hell? We'll add a seventh. I did watch the Canadian Prepper and a few other prepping channels. Uh, because I like to hear what you know people are doing in the self sufficiency um, game. That's not something that I'm likely to do. I mean, I'm a heavily disabled man. I'm reliant on the system. If the system goes down, I am simply screwed. 
But yeah, the self-sufficiency thing is an interesting uh, community. It's an, another one of those completely encased communities. But I found that a lot of the prepping channels have just ramped up the uh, be afraid, be very afraid videos. Um, that they're, they're all they're all doom singing at the moment about uh, about World War Three. And I mean, let's face it, World War Three is probably going to happen. But if it does, we'll all be dead tomorrow. So let's not worry about it, shall we? Let, you know. Practical prepping is fine. Uh, yes, there's every possibility that Russia or China might just decide to nuke us out of existence tomorrow. And if they do, well, we'll be dead. We won't have to worry about it, will we? So, yeah, it's um, it's one of those. The, the channels are fine. They just take it a bit far sometimes. I get the impression that they're too much in their own circle, that things just ramp up and they don't realise that they're becoming extreme in some of the, the approaches. Uh, but... You know, prepping is a, is a smart thing to do. Um, prepping in a smart way is a smart thing to do. Uh, having you know, a month's supply of food, um, a, you know, a water, uh, a water uh, still in your back garden, a solar panel, a med kit, um, and a fire extinguisher just in case something bad happens. You, know, you never know, there could be a, a disaster, there could be a bad storm or an earthquake or something. You might be trapped, you might be in a situation where you know, cars can't get to you, there's no food can get to you, the the water will be switched off for three days. Having a way of looking after yourself in that situation, that's not a bad idea. That's a good plan. You should do that. But uh yeah, um a lot of people take it way too far and they become full blown like doomsday bunker types and I mean if you're spending your entire life uh terrified of dying and um terrified of the end of the world and planning this immaculate bunker so that you'll always be able to survive if you spend 30 40 years doing that you've wasted the 30 40 years of your life making sure that the last 10 of them still happen you know what maybe maybe you die in the bloody wars and everything explodes but maybe instead of wasting your time building the death building the doom bunker so you can survive in the wasteland for 10 years you just enjoy the 30 years you would have had beforehand you know just a thought but that aside, I got ranting again. This was supposed to be a positive tag. This is supposed to be a positive tag, and I've got ranting again. Right. This is this is why I should not be trusted um, with with the camera because I can't be trusted to do straight positivity. I can't just be saccharinely sweet and make a spread the love tag. There's going to be a rant hidden inside it. <laughs> but I've, I'll move on. Question six: Who do you want to tag? To do this tag next. And I'm going to tag. Uh, Billy Bonsai. And I'm going to tag Criminoli. I think both of those channels. Will have interesting people. They want to highlight. And interesting answers to these questions. But on top of tagging Bill, uh, Billy Bonsai. And uh, Criminoli. I'm also going to tag every other channel. I've mentioned so far. So uh, that will be. Um, the Den of Elucidation. Lee's Library, J. Scott Phillips, Jordan P uh, Parsons, Nico's Book Reviews, Squirrel Bookshelf, uh, Luke Edwards, Owen J. Wall, Cameron Cheney. I know some of these may not ever come back to BookTube, but if they do, I'm tagging all of you. You're all tagged. In fact, while we're here, sod it, let's tag all of the non-BookTubers as well. They're probably never, ever going to see this video, and even if they did, they don't have an opinion on BookTube. But screw it. Karen Puzzles, Annan Bay Figures, Shadowversity, Lindy Beige, Ranton Griffin, and Hannah Barron, you are all tagged. I want a BookTube video from you. It'll be hilarious. You're all tagged. All of you. <laughs> Uh, but in <laughs> given that, um, and a lot of these channels probably won't respond. <laughs> um, realistically, it's it's Billy Bonsai, Criminali, and probably like two or three of the others that will end up responding if anyone responds, and that'll be fine. There is a seventh question though. Uh, question seven: Given the newbies from question one are still new to BookTube and are therefore unlikely to know enough channels to be able to answer the questions in this tag, what alternate tag would you like to see them do instead? And my answer is the Modern Literary Canon tag, which is the previous tag I did um, last week. Uh, that would be the perfect tag for them to do, because uh, all three of the, of the channels from the first question, which would be uh, Hass, Lee's Library, and J. Uh, Scott Phillips, they're all the kind of people who have read at least a couple of classics. 
um, they've they've read deeply af- across a few genres. So I think that they will have really, really good answers to the modern literary canon tag uh, that I resurrected. Uh, and it's doing it's doing the rounds already. It's it's fairly popular. So let's keep that going. Let's keep the ball rolling on that tag and see if we can get that one further. Because that's a really fun tag too. So I'd say um, for those three channels, consider yourself tagged in the previous tag. And I'll link below so that you can see that tag video and you can see what the questions are. So that's the uh, that's the spread the love booktube tag. Let's spread the love. Um, and uh, may- maybe. Maybe people will make their version of the Spread the Love booktube tag without ranting in the middle. Because hopefully most of you out there are not quite so broken as me as you feel the need to all the time. Until next time. Bye.